Robert Caldini and Steve Martin are two researchers who have taken the time to research the different factors which influence people to say yes to others and came up with the science of persuasion. And this comes down to six different factors which we will look at in today's video. So often people make decisions based on a lot of different factors which are going on during a conversation and rather than taking the information and the time to process it then making a conscious decision people really decide on whether they want to invest or say yes to a person based on the following principles. So within this video we will take a look at these principles so by the end of the video you will have full awareness of the different factors which could encourage or influence people to say yes to you so that you can use this effectively either in your daily life or at work. So the first factor we can look at is reciprocation and this is related to the obligation that you will give back to others when you have received a level of service first. So in other words people are more likely to say yes to people that they believe they owe something to. And for a quick example of this if your long distance friend has reached out to you and invited you to their wedding then you are under the obligation that you must invite them to your wedding as well. Or maybe at work you have asked a colleague to cover one of your shifts at the weekend. Then in terms of reciprocation that colleague will feel that they owe you a favour and will have to return this. And we actually see this with many large brands who give discount deals to people on their birthday. So this so called gift isn't just because they feel like being nice but these businesses will know that through reciprocation you will then be likely to come back to that business and buy their products as you will also feel under the obligation through what they have given to you. And within Robert Caldini's and Steve Martin's studies they also found that when restaurants give you something at the end of your meal such as a free mint they actually saw their tips increase by 3%. So in summary the first factor basically means that people will be more likely to say yes to those that they feel they owe something to. The next factor we can look at is scarcity and this factor is related to the fact that people want more of what they can actually have less of. And you may have heard of the term before scarcity marketing and this is related to this same concept when businesses create a sense of urgency that a product they are selling is nearly going out of stock or when they publicize that a certain product or service will be a particular price for a limited time only. This actually creates a sense of urgency and makes people want to act off impulse to purchase something because they feel that they're going to miss out. And we may see this with large supermarkets like Tesco where they have chose a product let's say it's the likes of Easter and they want to announce that their Easter eggs are reduced to a set price for a limited time only. Through the fear of people missing out on this deal or the easter eggs selling out they will go straight to this store and buy from them. But in return for the likes of Tesco these customers are more than likely going to stay in the shop itself and buy other products from their store creating more sales for that business. So if you are a business owner you will want to think about what is unique about your products or service and then consider what customers stand to lose if they don't buy it as soon as possible. The next factor is based off the idea that people follow and are more open to saying yes to credible knowledgeable experts and this is known as authority. And for an example of this if we went into an independent consultant or even the likes of a physiotherapist you may see on the walls of these professionals that there are pictures of their qualifications and achievements and this isn't because they want to show off what they have achieved in the past but science actually shows that people are more likely to listen to and abide by what someone is saying if they actually deem them credible knowledgeable experts. And this also reciprocates with those professionals who wear uniforms whilst at work where this is recognized for having authority and who may be deemed reliable. We also might see this within corporate communications or public relations businesses where if you make a call to this organization you may be able to get through to a receptionist who before passing you on to their colleague will spend the time in mentioning their credentials before passing you on and this way they will be able to uphold a level of authority persuading you to say yes before you have interacted with this certain individual. And this type of introduction could mention anything from the likes of an individual's experience within that business or in a particular area of the service that you aim to receive. 
So now that we have looked at authority, the next one that we can consider is consistency. And this is all about people being consistent with the things that they have previously said or done. And we see a lot of businesses today where they try to look for different ways for people to make a small commitment to that company. Where I'm sure we've all subscribed to an email list before. Providing a business with our personal details to receive promotions and any other informational content. So not only does this maybe at times bombard us with irrelevant information. But making that small commitment to that company gives them that slight chance of us saying yes to them again and buying from their service and products. So this factor is related to voluntary, active and public commitment towards something. And within the studies as well, it was also shown that hospitals were able to reduce missed appointments by 18% just by getting their patients to write down the date and time of their next appointment themselves. So we can see here the power of commitment to others. And the next one, you might be able to guess, and this is actually liking. So yes, you're more likely to say yes to someone who you actually like. But I suppose, what does it mean to actually like someone? So the studies within this principle show that we actually like people based off three different reasons. And these are that we like people who are similar to us. We like people who pay us compliments. And we like people who cooperate with us towards mutual goals. So within this one, you might want to think if you're within a business or even if you run your own business, how could you come up with the ways to improve your customer relationships by implementing the liking principle? And this also applies within team building exercises as well, where if you have a group of people have shared similar interests before completing a certain task, these individuals are more likely to complete this task at a quicker time rate than those who have not took the time to introduce themselves and share any similarities. So this should encourage us, the time taken during a first initial interaction with the customer should be spent either complimenting, discussing similarities, or clearly defining and understanding their goals and what they're trying to achieve. And this way, a sense of liking will be created, making the output more likely for your business. This brings us on to the final factor, which is consensus. And this factor is related to the people looking to the actions of others to determine their own. And we might have seen this massively within the political world where people really act upon those who are leading different change initiatives where their action and words can influence others massively. This is why it's so important for business leaders or executives or managing directors or CEOs to act in a way that demonstrates positivity and productivity towards the workplace where this can build consensus with different people to get involved with the business in terms of how it's going to reach its goals and grow. So that concludes an overview of the six different factors when it comes to the sense of persuasion, where we looked at reciprocation, scarcity, authority, consistency, liking and consensus. And I would encourage you, if you are within a business, to test these with either your customers or even your colleagues as well. Because although a lot of people believe that the success of businesses comes down to luck, there is always a sense behind this. And understanding just some of these factors could be the difference in you having quality customer relationships or a productive workplace. We have also been developing videos like this on Profile Tree's YouTube channel where we have been looking at different business strategy tips as well as focusing on the area of digital transformation in how you can effectively implement technology within your own business today to become more operationally efficient and deliver value to your customers. If you do need any guidance or support in around this area, make sure and contact us today and we would be more than happy to help you with this. That is the end of today's video. Thank you very much for watching and have a brilliant day.